Welcome to the Meet FileMaker 18 platform webinar. I'm Rick Kelman, Director of Product Management, and I have with me here Robert Halsey, the Lead Product Manager for FileMaker Pro Advanced, FileMaker Go, and FileMaker WebDirect, as well as Neil Wright, Product Manager for FileMaker Server and e-commerce. Now, before we get started, I have some brief housekeeping notes. For the best experience, we strongly recommend that you participate in this web seminar with at least a broadband connection. If you have any problems or require online assistance at any time, please contact LogMeIn Technical Support at 888-259-8414. Again, that number is 888-259-8414. Now, during today's presentation, you will have an opportunity to type in questions. So let's talk briefly about how to enter a question. You go to the control panel, you click the question section, you enter your question and you click send, and we'll cover as many questions as time allows at the end of our presentation. So once again, I'm Rick Kelman, the Director of Product Management here at FileMaker, and we're here to talk about FileMaker 18 and all of the great new um, capabilities that are in the platform. So let's get started. Uh, we'll talk about uh, what's new uh, throughout the platform with a number of great new capabilities for creating, securing, and sharing your custom apps across the platform. So let's take a high-level look at each of uh, these before we show you some of the demos. We'll start off with FileMaker Pro Advanced. And first, we have a new user interface for importing data that allows you to more easily map imported source data to your FileMaker fields using the new Import Field Mapping dialog box. You use type ahead instead of drag and drop for greater efficiency, and you can specify custom delimiters even when importing certain file types. We also have the new capability to open a specific app at launch that will provide better app discoverability for your users. Uh, and you can open a specific custom app when you're launching FileMaker Pro Advanced uh, by using the assisted install text file. And here's a screenshot of the new attribute we've added to the assisted install text file that allows you to uh, target which app you want the uh, FileMaker Pro Advanced app icon to launch. There's also a number of scripting and calculation function additions uh, in FileMaker 18. There's a file con uh, version comparison, which is a new script step that saves a copy of FileMaker uh, file as XML. And then you use the XML file to more easily compare changes between uh, your file versions. We also have new file-based script steps. Um, these are uh, create scripts that read, write, ma and manage external data files uh, to, for example, write log files or export data into a custom format. And these new script steps replace the need for many third-party uh, file-based plugins. We have a new script error logging so that you can more easily debug your workflow automation scripts. This new script step will write information about script errors to a log file. Uh, we have a new while wow calculation function. This calculation function repeats logic while a condition is true, and then it returns the results. Uh, this will help replace the need for some of your recursive custom functions that you may be using today. And to complement that, we have a new set recursion calculation function that allows you to set the maximum number of iterations for recursion and loops within an expression. The default limit is at 50,000 iterations, but this new function will allow you to lower and raise that limit. Now let's talk about some of the new security enhancements to the FileMaker 18 platform. We have a new managed security access. This is a new privilege that allows developers to offload um, account access management to other team members without needing to provide them full access to any other parts of their file. There's enhancements to the managed security dialog box. We've streamlined this dialog uh, to help uh, you to be more efficient in managing access to your custom apps. We've enhanced uh, plugin security uh, to help ensure that your plugins come from trustworthy sources before they're loaded uh, by your FileMaker app. Within the plugin SDK, plugin developers are now able to digitally sign their plugins and notifications will warn users before loading an unsigned plugin. Uh, also, um, the uh, default access protection to prevent other FileMaker files from accessing the data and schema in your custom app, the require full access privilege to use references to this file will now be enabled by default for all newly created files. This is a screenshot of the warning dialog that users would get if they are using an unsigned, uh, unsigned plugin, and then they can make a decision of what to do from there. 
Uh, and this is what we're talking about in the managed security dialogue. Um, this option with the red rectangle around it uh, is now checked by default for all your newly created files so that you have uh, default control over uh, can other files access um, your um, custom app files. Next, we'll talk about enhancements to FileMaker Go. We also uh, are supporting the ability to open a specific app through FileMaker Go. Uh, this will provide better app discoverability for your users. Uh, and you can specify this using uh, Mobile Device Management MDM to set up this capability. We have now append to existing PDF in FileMaker Go that you can append additional data to a specified PDF file uh, using the script uh, step which is defined in FileMaker Pro Advanced. Uh, we have enhanced barcoding support for FileMaker Go. We've added four additional barcode types, PDF 417, ITF-14, Aztec and Data Matrix are all new barcode types that we support. And then finally, um, we uh, help simplify credential management. We now support OAuth 2 so that you can use your Amazon, Google, or Microsoft Azure account credentials to log into apps that you've created with the iOS app SDK. Now going over to FileMaker Server, there's a number of enhancements we've made there, starting with startup restoration. Uh, and with this uh, feature, FileMaker files will now be automatically recoverable if there is a hardware or software crash. A new restoration log in FileMaker Server validates uh, database entries when a file's first open before the clients access it and if the file had not been closed properly. Uh, to help support this new feature, FileMaker Server will be able to use multiple processing threads that help uh, uh, increase performance. Uh, there are enhancements uh, to the FileMaker Server Admin Council, Server Monitoring, the Data API and Ad Admin API, and Neil will cover these a bit later in the presentation. And then finally, um, we, uh, FileMaker Server now includes a Spanish uh, language localized version. For FileMaker Cloud for AWS, um, we uh, have launched not only our FileMaker Pro 18 platform, but we've updated FileMaker Cloud uh, to support all of the new features that we're presenting to you today in the FileMaker 18 platform. In addition, um, for Upload to Host, the menu item under File Sharing uh, has now been labeled Upload to Host. Uh, users can uh, or uh, users can go there to upload their uh, to FileMaker Cloud for AWS as well as server. You can upload multiple uh, files at once, plus the redesigned dialog box that provides a more streamlined user experience has been um, provided as well. Now, talking about the next generation of FileMaker uh, Cloud, um, this is something that was announced at DevCon last year in Dallas, Texas, as well as in our product roadmap last November. We'll be coming to you later uh, to talk in more detail about this. And at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Robert Holsey to demo some of what I've just shared. Perfect. Thanks, Rick. Uh, so I'm going to ahead and minimize this. And here we've got a little file we put together to demonstrate some of these new bits of functionality. The first of which is our new while function. If you're familiar with other programming languages that use while or even our loop script step we've had in the product for quite a while, uh, this will be pretty familiar to you. As Rick mentioned, it repeats a bit of logic while a condition is true and then returns you the result. There are lots and lots of use cases for while loops. Uh, Rick also mentioned that uh, in the past you may have used our uh, custom functions to do something very similar. But to highlight one particular example, one we've already heard quite a bit of uh, praise around, is parsing through a JSON object. So here what we've got is an object that contains some donator information. And I have been tasked with taking the amounts they donated and adding that up and then storing it in my file. I don't need the rest of that uh, JSON data. So what I would like to do is just iterate through each of those amounts, add them together, and then capture the result down here, which is what you're exactly what you're seeing. So here is my while function that I've written. In this particular case, I've hard-coded that it's just going to go through this three times. It's going to add the value in the amount uh, uh, section and then return my results. And if I go in and make a change here, you'll see that that immediately updates as you'd expect from our calculation engine. So that's an example of while it's worth call, calling out the fact that this will work across all of our clients. So it's available in Pro, Go, and FileMaker Web Direct. Moving on, we have a new script step that we introduced in this release. It's called set error logging. 
And it's a great companion to the set error capture that we've had in previous versions of the product. By enabling the script step in your script, if a user runs into an error, um, it will immediately create a single file in the user's documents directory that you can then parse through and uh, discover what happened. So to that file, we're gonna write a timestamp, the database that, was, uh, that, that the script was running from, the file name, the account name of the person that ran the script, the scripts, the script itself, the script step, its number, an error number, and then at the end, you can actually use the calculation engine to capture for particular errors and return a bit more information. So what you're seeing down below is just a little snippet of one of those error logs, but to see this in action, I'm gonna open up my Finder, and I'm gonna, when I click on this uh, button, it's gonna open up a copy of a custom map that I know has errors in the opener script. So I open that, and here you see that I have my script log. And when I drill in, I can see the time, the file that was opened, who opened it, the script. We're seeing that a perform find is where the error happened at line 34, and it returned an error of 401. Later on in that same script, we also have another error at the go to field at line 37 with an error 102, and then I've given myself some helpful information so that I know where to go and fix that problem. If we were to look at the script itself, so coming back into FileMaker for a moment, here is our on window open script, and I've got my set error logging turned on, and here's how I've specified that calculation to capture specifically for 102. Now, this is an if statement, but of course you could use a case and capture for as many errors as you would like. Uh, perhaps you're doing it to clue yourself in, uh, but there's also cases where you may want to provide some additional helpful information for the end user in the hopes that they may be able to address the problem themselves. So that is our new uh, set error logging. Um, similarly, this one is uh, <laughs> supported on FileMaker Pro and FileMaker Go. We have not brought this functionality to WebDirect yet. Uh, we are looking for feedback from all of you on how this uh, new uh, bit of functionality is working for you before we extend it to the rest of the platform. Now, finally, uh, we have got a whole series of new script steps that are all aimed at helping you manipulate data files on disk. This is something that in the past you may have done using either plugins or there's some FileMaker tricks I've seen out there to accomplish some of these tasks. Uh, but now with FileMaker 18, you'll be able to do all of these native with new script steps. Uh, I, this is another feature that has quite a lot of use cases for it. Uh, we've already seen uh, quite a bit of excitement around being able to create uh, user logging out of your system or maybe manipulating a bit of data you've brought in from other some other data source that was dumped on disk that you need to do a bit of cleanup before you actually bring it into FileMaker. Uh, so my demo won't be a specific use case, but we'll show you some of this in action. So let me just make some room on my desktop here. And so this little file, uh, will take advantage of those script steps so I can create a new data file. We'll just call it my file. We'll hit create. And you see, I've got a new text file that has been created on my disk. Uh, it's currently blank. It is worth noting uh, that this dot text is something that I, as the developer of this particular app, have hard coded, uh, but I have been getting lots of questions on whether or not that's limited to just text files. It is not, you can create whatever data file you choose. Now, if you made a mistake or you needed to change the name of a file, that's pretty easy too. So let's go ahead and change this to your file and we'll click rename, see that that then updates. We've got some scripts to help you identify whether or not the file already exists on disk, which we can see here it does, returns an a number one. And we can also check to see the file size. So this is a blank file, so of course it's gonna be zero bytes. Then when we wanna write to it, let's do a classic hello world and write to that file. Now when I open it up, we see there is my new text. And similarly, we can then read that text back into FileMaker. Then when we're all done, Go ahead and delete, and you can see that that file is removed, so you can clean up after yourself. So those are uh, an example of all the script steps in action. Again, lots of use cases. One last one I'll leave you with, though, that we're seeing um, uh, people use is a com combining this with the error logging uh, script that I was just talking about. So maybe you have uh, the error log out to the disk of the user, uh, but then you've got a file that sucks those uh, 
user uh, those errors back into a file, maybe a support file that you created that can then clean up on disk. So those were some new uh, script steps and functions that we released in FileMaker 18. Now what I'd like to do is to give you a tour of some uh, improvements to the user experience we've made. First off, we're gonna come up to File, Manage, and then Security. Now you're probably uh, pretty familiar with the old uh, Manage Security dialog. Uh, I should say dialogues, because we actually had a basic view as well as a detailed view of this dialog. And after many hours of, of speaking with uh, lots of folks in the community, uh, we took all the best pieces of both of those dialogues and tried to combine it into one. So we've streamlined things quite considerably, uh, but we've also tried to upload important or up, up level important information. So for example, uh, you'll notice that we're now calling out the priority order as actually being priority and that this is something that's important that you need to pay attention to. So if you've got a mix of, a, of uh, in-file accounts as well as uh, external groups, you'll need to pay close attention to the priority to ensure that the user when they log in is accessing with the correct privilege set that you expect. We've also added a bit of new functionality so I can uh, select multiple accounts now and actually change their privilege sets all at once. Uh, hopefully saving you a bit of time instead of doing it one by one. And you've also probably noticed that this uh, is a pretty clean dialogue when you come in. You know, we, we try to put as much information, condense it down as possible so that if you need to come in here and see something at a glance, you can easily do so. Uh, but then once you select one, you'll see that a side panel slides out, giving you a bit more information, allowing you to specify the password as well as a bit of a description. Now, we've also added uh, a pretty important new feature in Managed Security. It's a new privilege option. So let's drill down into my privileges here. And under the Other Privileges section, there is a new option called Manage Accounts That Don't Have Full Access. And this simple checkbox actually does something really powerful. So in the past, you've created custom apps on behalf of a client. You've given them access to the file, but you don't want to give them full access because you don't want them messing with schema or scripts or layouts. Uh, but you do need to have some way to manage their accounts. So as new employees join and they need access to that custom app, or if they leave, or maybe someone gets promoted, there's changes that you'll need to make to those accounts. In previous versions of FileMaker, this meant that you had one of two options. You could either roll your own account management using our scripting engine, which is time consuming, or you could take the responsibility of managing the accounts on behalf of your clients. Uh, if you've got a single client, maybe that's not that big of a deal, but I'm sure many of you have multiple clients and that can become a headache very quickly. Not to mention the fact that uh, you are the one taking responsibility. So if there's errors there, uh, you have to own them. With this new checkbox we introduced in FileMaker 18, Instead of doing all of that work or taking on that responsibility, you can simply create an account, specify this privilege, and offload that burden to a trusted member of the team. So let's go in ahead and take a look at what that actually means. I'm gonna log in as myself with that manage accounts uh, option. And when I log in, we'll see that I don't have access to things like script workspace, or really anything that gets at the schema of the file, but I still do have access to security. When I come in here, um, it looks mostly the same, but things like full access accounts are grayed out. I cannot make any changes to these. I can't even drill down into their details. But I will be able to do things like create new accounts, delete accounts. I can even specify privilege sets that have already been pre-assigned. However, I won't be able to assign full access, nor will I be able to create new privilege sets. Okay, so this will give them the same type of access that you could have provided through the scripting engine. However, now it just requires a single checkbox. Okay, so that's the new enhancements to managed security. Another area we made some pretty significant changes from a user experience standpoint is our import workflow. So let's import from our Excel spreadsheet. And when the dialogue comes up, uh, you'll notice immediately that we've made quite a bit of changes here. You're first greeted with a popover that indicates uh, that or gives you the option of choosing what type of import you're doing. Uh, now this file is, uh, the table is currently blank, which is why I only have the add option. Um, and if you were ever to come and need to make a change here, you could just click on the arrow in the center of the source and target to bring that popover back up. 
But in this case, we're going to do an add. So the next thing I need to do is specify my source fields. And as, you, as I scroll through these records, you'll notice that it's not until the fourth record that we've got our field names. And in previous versions of FileMaker, that meant that I'd have to do some pre-processing on my data before I could successfully import and choose those as the field names. But now with FileMaker 18, I can just say, use this as field names. We automatically map them. And if we go back, you can see that the uh, records that were prior to the field names will just get excluded. Now that we've got our field names and I need to choose you know, whether or not I'm importing a field, instead of clicking on icons and cycling through them and trying to guess what they meant, uh, we now have a nice popover that comes up with very clear text, it's even color coded, so you know exactly what you're setting. And then for mapping the fields themselves, instead of using drag and drop like we had in the past, which uh, it did work well for small numbers of fields, uh, but then became uh, a bit tedious when you had a large number of fields. Instead of doing drag and drop, what we have instead is just simply type ahead. So I can start typing first, arrow down, and hit enter, and that quickly I've mapped my field. Our goal here was to keep your hands on the keyboard and allow you to very quickly navigate down this list and map the fields just by typing a couple of characters. So those changes were all aimed at uh, making the experience much more streamlined, uh, more intuitive, and, and less intimidating. Uh, but in addition to that, while we were in this dialog, we actually added a couple of, of new features as well. You may have noticed this orange gear icon that appeared in my first name field. What this allows me to do when I click on it is specify whether or not the perform auto enter options will run at import. So if you've ever had a case where you've had some fields that you need to uh, perform auto enter and others that you did not want to, where you would have likely done multiple import passes, now in FileMaker 18, you can go in at a per field basis and make that uh, determination. So in addition to doing it in line here at the target fields, down at the bottom, we've got an additional gear that will collect all the fields that have perform auto enter. So you can quickly go down this list and turn on or off the ones that you wish. There's a one additional new feature in this dialog. It is the ability to specify a field delimiter. Uh, so it's not enabled in this particular case because I'm importing from the Excel spreadsheet, but if I was bringing in another data file and it was not separated by tab or comma, I could manually specify what, was, uh, what the delimiter was for that file. So those are the enhancements coming to import. Uh, I do want to call out the fact that our new import workflow is in FileMaker Pro Advanced on the desktop only. Uh, FileMaker Go does not currently have an import workflow. Um, FileMaker WebDirect will maintain the one that it has had in previous versions. However, if you are doing the import via scripting and not showing the dialog, you can still take advantage of the new features of Perform Auto Enter per field as well as Perform, I'm sorry, the uh, custom delimiter. So. The last feature that I want to demonstrate for you is uh, one that's aimed really more at advanced users. In fact, it's up under the tools menu. So you'll need to make sure that you've enabled the advanced tools option under the application preferences. But once that's enabled, you can come in here, you'll see that there's a new option called save a copy as XML. There's actually a companion script of the same name that you can run. And what this will allow you to do is create a full XML representation of your custom app. Now, you may be asking yourself, well, why would I want to do that? Um, and this really gets at the point Rick made earlier. So if you've got multiple copies of, a, of an app that either you're, you're working on yourself or maybe with a team and you want to quickly determine the differences between those apps, this is where you would use the save a copy as XML. Now, one thing that I want to call out because I've been getting a good bit of questions about this is, uh, no, not just anyone can create a copy of uh, an XML representation of your file. Of course, this does require full access privileges. And if you remember earlier, I had logged in as that special new uh, account management privilege. So what I'll need to do first is actually re-log in as admin. Now that I'm logged in, I can create a re representation of my file. We'll save this to the desktop and call it contacts v1. And then let's go in and make a change to this file. So let's just add a new field, create that, and then run that uh, menu item again. We'll call this V2. 
And now I've got my uh, two full XML representations of my, of my two versions that I can then drag into something like bbedit, which will allow me to compare these two files. And I can quickly arrow down and find that particular field that was added. So this was a pretty simple example. Uh, I'm sure that when you make changes to your file, you're making more than just a single field addition. Um, and so while you could use tools like bbedit, and there's lots um, out there uh, that you can uh, go and download, I fully expect, and we're already starting to see it, that the FileMaker community are gonna create powerful tools specific for FileMaker. Um, you know, within a day of launch, I saw an example of a very simple file that you could drag your XML files into that would give you a uh, list of all of the changes that you could then drill into and see the specifics of. So we're really excited not only for the functionality of itself, but the power that it gives the community to then leverage. All right, so that was uh, a quick rundown of the big features uh, that was uh, introduced in FileMaker 18. What I'd like to do now is switch back over to Keynote so that I can hand things over to my colleague, Neil, to talk a bit about the enhancements coming to FileMaker Server. Thanks, Rob. So hi, I'm, I'm Neil Wright. I'm product manager here at FileMaker, and I look after FileMaker Server and also our e-commerce services. Today, I'm gonna to talk about some of the new things we've been working on for FileMaker Server. With FileMaker Server, everything we do exists with usability, security, scalability, and reliability in mind. And I'd first like to talk about some work we've been doing in FileMaker Server 18 that is squarely aimed at substantially strengthening two of those areas, reliability and scalability, and that is startup restoration. So first of all, what is the objective of this work? Simply, it is to ensure that if there is an event that causes FileMaker Server 18 to crash, such as a power outage or a hardware failure, that FileMaker Server can automatically attempt to get your data back to a state that is not corrupted and does not require any kind of manual file recovery or backup restore. Think of this as a continuously running safety net where all your data transactions are being logged and FileMaker Server knows when it restarts, the point at which it left off. Now you might expect that if FileMaker Server is noting all of your data changes as it goes along, that there would be some kind of performance hit. Well, as part of this work, we have also made our first significant steps in under the hood changes to our engine designed to take advantage of the latest server hardware, multi-cores and solid state disk drives. There are some very specific op operations in FileMaker Server 18 that may take longer, the most significant being large imports. Therefore, we have given you the option to turn startup restoration and PLL off if you judge that the fine performance increases are outweighed by, say, doing some regular large imports. It's your choice, and we have published a white paper to give you some guidance on this. As I said earlier, we are continuing to work on all of these important areas of server, but performance will be the most visible change you will see over future releases. So I'd like to move on now to some other changes and enhancements that are in FileMaker Server 18. First of all, some enhancements in the general administration of your FileMaker Server. You can now change your default backup time via a CLI command. You can view script schedule successes or failures. The admin console will show you the last time it was restarted. And lastly, we've improved the interface in the admin console so it is clearer to see the status of your solution files. Then we have some additions to a FileMaker data API, such as being able to dynamically discover how your FileMaker file is structured. The improved FileMaker Data API now supports XML metadata, including script names, layout names, and layout schema. Also, please note that the trial period for FileMaker Admin API and FileMaker Server 17 will expire on September 27th, 2019. On the Admin API side, we have written, rewritten large parts of the API, so it is now based on the Open API specification. Plus, I'm pleased to say that the FileMaker Admin API is a standard feature in FileMaker Server 18 and is no longer in a trial state. 
And for those of you running the FileMaker platform in Spanish, I'm sure you'll be very pleased to hear that we now support FileMaker Server in Spanish language. Now, let's move on to the last part of FileMaker Server 18, and that is monitoring enhancements. If you are running FileMaker Server across multiple servers and have the task of monitoring their health, then this should be of some real interest. Zabbix is an open source software monitoring tool that is fast becoming the choice for people who want to remotely monitor server hardware and software. We are making available some ready-made configuration files and a how-to white paper to get you going on this much quicker. So let's quickly look at some of the things you can get from Zabbix. Once you've installed the Mac or Windows agent on your FileMaker server, then you will run the Zabbix console software to bring across vital real-time monitoring stats, such as the number of users, uh, the server's memory usage, and how much free memory is available, the machine's CPU utilization, its disk space, and free disk space, the network traffic, and information on any specific processes running on that server, including those, of course, for FileMaker Server. You could even set triggers based on any of the monitoring stats so that if thresholds are reached, then these notifications become revealed. Zabbix is free under an open source license. We have configuration templates and a white paper available on the FileMaker community. So that's it from me and back over to Rick now. Okay, thank you, Neil, and thank you, Robert. So let me cover real quickly the supported operating systems of the FileMaker 18 platform, starting with FileMaker Pro Advanced. On the Mac side, we support uh, Mac OS High Sierra 10.13, uh, as well as Mojave 10.14. Uh, On the Windows front, uh, we support Windows 10 Enterprise and Pro Editions, the fall creator's update. Windows 8.1 Standard and Pro Editions with update. Uh, as well as Windows 7 Service Pack 1 Professional and Ultimate Editions with update. For FileMaker Server, on the Mac side, again, it's High Sierra and uh, Mojave. Uh, for Windows, we support Windows Server 2016 Data Center with desktop experience, Windows Server 2016 Standard Edition with desktop experience, as well as Windows Server 2012 R2 Standard Edition with update. For FileMaker Go, iOS 12.2 is the minimum. And for FileMaker WebDirect, for desktop browsers, we support Safari 12, Internet Explorer 11, Microsoft Edge 44, and Chrome 72. For mobile browsers, uh, mobile Safari on iOS uh, uh, 12 minimum, uh, and uh, Chrome 72 and Android 7 as a minimum. I would also like to talk about the FileMaker 15 platform end of life. Uh, FileMaker is announcing that on September 20th of this year, in 2019, the FileMaker 15 platform will no longer be available for direct sales and support, which includes tech support, um, replacement media, downgrade media, or downgrade license keys. The FileMaker 15 uh, platform includes FileMaker Pro 15, FileMaker Pro 15 Advanced, and uh, FileMaker Server 15. Also note that FileMaker Go 15 was discontinued um, last September of 2018. Uh, and then here's a link that you can always go to at filemaker.com slash support slash product dash availability uh, that HTML to uh, always check the latest availability and compatibility of the FileMaker platform. I'd also like to call out that um, we, as of April, have launched a brand new FileMaker community. Uh, the main developer community has a fresh look in an organization, uh, and we have also launched a brand new partner-only community as well as a dedicated Japanese language community. This is a great resource um, to get tips from experts, collaborate with other like-minded developers, and share your expertise uh, and follow topics of interest. Now, um, we are still uh, perfecting this. It's been a pretty major change to a new forum, um, and we will continue uh, to uh, make progress progress uh, in making this as easy and as powerful as possible. I'd also make, like to make a call out to our DevCon uh, 2019. Uh, it's going to be in Orlando, uh, Florida at the Gaylord Palms Ro Resort uh, the week of August 5th through 8th. 
Uh, if you register by June 7th, uh, you can save up to $200. Uh, and if you want more information about the sessions and what's going to be happening there, uh, just go to filemaker.com slash devcon for more information. So now we're going to go into our Q&A session, and uh, while we do that, I will leave up all of the list of what we presented to you today to remind you um, as um, you, you uh, take your questions, and we'll uh, answer as many as we are able to uh, and that we have time um, for. So uh, let's get started. Okay, uh, so we've got a slew of questions here, uh, and there are more coming in, so we'll try to keep up. The first question uh, that we received, um, and it must have been when I was uh, doing the lead-in before the demos, uh, says, so we can use AWS now? Uh, and uh, the, the, the answer is yes. Um, in fact, we're a little bit more than a year and a half into having uh, FileMaker Cloud um, available through AWS through Marketplace. Uh, so uh, you could use, um, you know, FileMaker uh, essentially using AWS as the service to host. So that is yes. So a question here for Robert um, about does error logging work for perform script on server? So not in this release. Um, in this release, the, that feature was only available through FileMaker Pro and Go. Uh, we're evaluating based off of feedback uh, from all of you uh, whether we expand it to the rest of the platform in the future. Okay, here's another question, Robert. Um, on the new import box, can you select a multiple fields and select the mapping option all, um, at once? No, you can only map one field to one field, if, if that's what you're asking. If you're talking about just uh, selecting a bunch of fields, and changing from import to not import, as an example, that you can do with multi-select. Okay, uh, Neil, here's one um, for you, and it's around um, fundamentally around the startup restoration. Uh, and the question is, um, it's, it's sort of a statement and a, and a question. The new server with data restoration is impacting import speed. Is there any update to accelerate uh, this back and beyond? Um, and then the person says that they do a lot of, of imports and data restoration is not feasible and is sort of asking you know, about performance uh, improvements um, you know, going forward. So what do you have to say about that? Yeah, so <clears throat> the statement is true. Uh, with, with imports, there, there is definitely a, a performance impact when you're using startup restoration. Um, the, the reason behind that is um, start of restoration, um, as, as I described, is, is creating a log of every transaction as it goes along. Um, so when you're doing anything which is very write intensive, um, not so much just creating records through the UI, but when you're creating a lot of records through an import, especially a large import, then you, you will definitely see some impact there. Now. Um, you know, it, it's not a situation we particularly like. So, you know, you, you can bet that we're working on um, improving that in future versions. And as I said, you know, performance, security, uh, resilience, you know, all those things are really important to us going forwards with server. Um, there, there is a workaround in terms of if, you, if you're if you running, say, a, um, a machine that's doing a lot of overnight imports or something like that, and it's, it's primary, uh, its primary task is doing imports, then you know, t turning startup restoration <coughs> off will take you back to um, the, the pre-startup restoration performance for imports. So it, it is a workaround. Um, we do hear you know, people don't like the performance impact, so um, you know, we, we hear you. All right, thanks, Neil. Uh, a couple more for you, Robert, related to the import feature. Uh, one question is, will the enhanced import Excel function operate the same from a script step, specifically excluding header rows? Yes, it will. Um, so as I mentioned, as long as you're not showing the dialog, um, that the new features of the import workflow uh, will work. So not just the header rows, but also um, the per field, per uh, perform auto enter, as well as the custom delimiters. This is a, 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 a similar question um, to the one you just answered. Um, with the file import, can you save the mapping as presets uh, so you don't have to manually map fields every time? 
Uh, a couple of things there. One, uh, the dialogue should remember the last import you did. So if you're continuing to import from the same source, one of the options in the dropdown for your import mapping uh, will be, um, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but it's essentially the last import that you did. Uh, but if you're doing something that's uh, ongoing over a long period of time, but you're continuing to import from the same source, I'd highly recommend writing a script at that point. Uh, even if you have to customize it uh, slightly, at least that way you can um, specify the fields that you want, you know, sort of to get you started and then have it show the dialogue and then move on from there. Okay, here's another question about FileMaker um, Cloud at AWS. It says, if you're using FileMaker via AWS, is the FileMaker Cloud you're talking about uh, that will be changing for future licensing? So this is about the comment I made about that the feature set of FileMaker 18, uh, our new um, FileMaker Cloud at AWS has parity of all those features. <clears throat> uh, and then the, um, the other cloud is something that we announced at DevCon and talked about at the product roadmap back in November. And that's something that we'll get back to you on. The big difference uh, there is that um, in order to use our current FileMaker Cloud at AWS, you have to um, essentially uh, become an AWS member, uh, set and go through the AWS marketplace uh, and then either purchase um, the, um, the, the the service there or do a bring your own license. Um, and if for the next version of cloud, you will not have to go to AWS. You'll come directly through us. Um, and so you don't have to have a separate bill and a, and, uh, and a separate um, you know, login and, and the, we'll have all the pieces together. It'll essentially be a service. Um, there's another question of, is, are there any plans to expand SSO beyond Azure, uh, Amazon, uh, and Google? Uh, I don't have anything to announce now, but it's definitely something we're looking at. Um, SSO uh, is um, something that um, we're very interested in expanding out uh, to meet all the needs of the customers. Uh, so um, nothing specific to announce now, but definitely something we're looking at. Um, here's another question. Um, are there any plans to implement importing data from a fixed width text file? Um, and at, at this point, no, we don't have any plans. But if you could, the person that asked this question, if you could email us um, sort of the use case, what you're trying to, to, to do here, um, so that we can take a look at that. Um, you know, our email addresses are our first name last name with an underscore separating the first and last uh, at filemaker.com. So Rick Kalman, it would be Rick underscore K-A-L-M-A-N at filemaker.com or Robert Holsey. Um, and just let us know uh, so that we can take a look at that. It's a question here for Robert. Um, will FileMaker 18 convert FileMaker 11 files? Uh, so it will. Um, there were uh, you know, some changes going from an 11 to 12 uh, file format. Um, but you should be able to convert your file um, pretty straightforwardly. Neil, here's uh, one that I'm not sure um, what you can talk about maybe in general is, are there uh, plans in the future to do updates to FileMaker server via an updater file rather than the way uh, that's done today by completely <coughs> uninstalling and reinstalling server? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, that, that's something we've we, we we certainly understand everyone's pain whenever we do an upgrade, um, an update that you have to reinstall server basically from scratch. So, it, uh, you know, we we understand your pain on that. Um, the difficulty f right now is because um, server does run multiple services um, under the server, um, and making sure they all um, get updated correctly and all restart correctly. Um, we, we haven't quite figured that out yet, um, but, it, but it's definitely something we'd like to see, um, you know, to, to make those updates easier. Okay, another question here is, uh, will the database format be changing uh, in FileMaker version 18? I assume that most of you have your hands on it right now. It is the, still the same file format, .fmp12. So anything from FileMaker 12 uh, forward that has that file format um, would be supported. So uh, it's the same file format. Um, then uh, let's see. Uh, here's one, Robert. Um, 
can the plugin security be disabled per file? What if I have a plugin I really need to use, but it's not signed and I don't want users to get the security message every day? So there is no way to disable the plugin uh, warning at a per file basis. This is not something that is controllable by the developer. Uh, this is a security measure for the user to prevent cases where a plugin is being loaded without the user's knowledge. Uh, so you will need to either get that plugin uh, signed and, and validated, uh, or you'll have to have instructions for the user to um, uh, essentially check the checkbox to not show each time. Uh, so to be clear there, they will, they will have to see it the very first time, uh, but then they have the option to say, okay, that's fine, uh, and sort of whitelist it uh, moving forward. Okay, here's a question about um, script error logging. What kind of tax does the error log put on the system if you just wanted to leave it on all the time for your users? Uh, we, we don't foresee a, a huge tax. I mean, this is additional processing, but they're very, it's very small. Uh, it would also depend, I suppose, on how many scripts that you have this turned on for, how many users, uh, but in large, this shouldn't put too much of a tax on the system. Here's a couple of questions, Robert, on the new um, file-based script steps. The first one is, um, is the um, file script step uh, is, is only for text files? So it is for text file. It's for text data files, not specifically the, data, the text format. Uh, as I was mentioning uh, during the demo, that's just something that I hard-coded in for the example to make it simple. Uh, but if you had other extensions that you wanted to use, then then you could do that. Okay. Another one on the uh, new import um, UI. Uh, can the custom delimiter be uh, calculated? No, it cannot. Uh, you will need to hard code that. Uh, I would be curious for use cases on on the need for calculate making it calculatable. Uh, so as Rick mentioned, if you could shoot one of us an email, uh, mine is Robert underscore Holsey at filemaker com and uh, we can follow up with that. Okay, um, there's a, a couple of questions related to the save as XML feature. Does save copy as XML include data or just the schema and layouts? It just includes the schema and layouts. Uh, including the data is something that we considered and did not include in this release, and that's something that we'll be monitoring as a potential option in the future. The other question is, how is the new export as XML different than a DDR exported as XML? Ah, great question. So the, um, the Save as XML is uh, much richer in many aspects than the DDRs. It, it gives a full XML representation of the app. Uh, now, our eventual long-term plans is to look at um, potentially replacing the DDR with our current XML format. Uh, there are some uh, extra sort of bell, bells and whistles that the DDR has that our Save as XML does not yet have, and that's something that we'll be evaluating as we move forward. Okay, um, there's a question of will the current um, data migration tool work with FileMaker 18? It will, uh, although we have updated the data migration tool alongside FileMaker 18 to address uh, some minor bugs and make minor tweaks. Uh, but the file format is the same, so the uh, the tool will work. Uh, Neil, this is um, a question I believe related to startup restoration, uh, and asks if ACID compliant, if, if essentially our server is now ACID compliant. Uh, yeah, good question. Um, you know, it, ACID compliance. It, it depends how you 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 look at that as a, a, a definition. Um, but certainly, everything we we do is aimed to to becoming ACID compliant. Um, you know, it's it's um, there are actually some very very good articles um, in our community about ACID compliance. Um, and, and as I said right at the beginning. You know, depending how you 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 define acid, but you know, resilience, security, um, the four pillars I spoke about at the beginning are all around becoming acid compliant. Okay, um, there's a question about the runtime, um, and if it's still in FileMaker Pro Advanced 18, the uh, answer is yes, that is still there. 
As you may be aware, we did announce the deprecation of the royalty-free runtime um, several versions back. Uh, it is still uh, in the current um, platform, um, but uh, no guarantee it'll, it'll be beyond that, um, and it is deprecated. So we're really asking people to, if you've got business models based on the runtime, to um, you know, to be aware that that's a deprecated technology. Uh, you may want to uh, contact uh, our um, uh, sales uh, partner management team and talk about SBA solution bundle agreements uh, as as a potential option. Uh, there is a question here, Robert, about um, the is there some special handling for PDF 417 barcode content? or will it read it as a line separated text chunk? Uh, so I'm not 100% sure of the answer here. I'm not aware of any special handling, uh, but if you wanted to shoot me an email, again, robert underscore holsey at filemaker.com, I can follow up with you. Okay, good. Um, another XML, uh, can the XML file created um, via save as XML be used to create a new file? Um, so not at this time, but I, all I'll say is I love what you're thinking there. Okay. All right, let me look down through here. Uh, one, another one with script error logging. With error logging, can you specify the location of the error log? No, so it will always save to the user's document directory. Uh, again, as I mentioned, though, you could use the uh, new file script steps that uh, we introduced in this release to um, grab the information out of that file and then delete it and clean it up if you choose. Okay, another one uh, related to the file-based script steps. Is there an append option for the right data to the file script step? Uh, there is not at this time. Uh, you will need to put your, uh, essentially your cursor at the end of the document uh, to then write to it. Another one uh, for the script says, can you name the file with any extension when creating files with FM18? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is similar to a question uh, from earlier. Uh, and so yes, I had just hard coded it uh, for the purposes of the demo, but you can put whatever file extension you, you choose. Okay. Um, on uh, importing or import mapping, can you map the same target fields multiple times? Uh, you cannot. Um, I do understand uh, the, the the desire there, um, but in this release, uh, that is not something that we've introduced. Uh, question is: the save as XML copy scriptable? Can I uh, run it from a script step? You can. Uh, so there's the equivalent script step: uh, save it copy of XML. Uh, it does have the same rules as the, the the menu item. Of course, you need to be logged in as an administrator, and it uh, takes the parameter of a window name. So you could even script this to run on another file that's opened, uh, which we think is powerful. But again, you do need to have um, uh, admin access to the file. Okay. Another one re related. Um, uh, to, to the um, save as XML. Does the feature save the layout setup dialog options within the XML? I, I'm not exactly sure what you're looking for there, but the XML representation is is a is meant to be a complete representation of your app. Um, so all settings, all um, everything that you've configured for that file it will be saved some in some way in the XML. Uh, Follow-up question, uh, can the save as XML work uh, server-side? Um, that's a good question that I don't know the answer off the top of my head. Um, I'd have to follow up on that. I can't remember where we landed on support. This is a feature that is being introduced uh, as we build it out, and so I know our focus was on the uh, client side in this release, but I can follow up with you, Vince. Okay, one more question, Robert, uh, and I'll go back over to Neil. Any news uh, for iOS uh, app SDK? Just that we updated it in this release. Um, it, it always stays locked, uh, lockstep with FileMaker Go. Uh, we did introduce new functionality that allows you to use the uh, OAuth providers for authentication, uh, but otherwise it, it was updated to um, support all the new features in FileMaker Go. Uh, here's a question, uh, Neil, um, that I'll have you take a stab at um, from uh, Barry here. It says, 
how hard slash easy um, would it be to upgrade from FileMaker Server 15 to 18, essentially spin up a new server in 18 and copy files from the old server? Yeah, so there's <clears throat> a couple of things there. So the, the actual upgrade process itself, when you went from 14 to 15, um, you, you'll see going to 15 to 18 is very similar in terms of, you know, it, it is just running an installer. Um, one thing you will notice is different, um, and something we brought in FileMaker Server 17 is the, the administration console is, is now a browser-based, um, a brand new app that, um, you know, you, you will notice a difference there. Um, in terms of migrating your files, um, yeah, so, so you know, in 15, you're, you're already using um, FP12 files, so you know, the, um, the compatibility with 18 is, you know, not, not a thing at all, so there's, there's no issue there whatsoever. Um, so you, you are basically just moving your files from, um, if it's one machine to another machine, um, or if you're on the same machine, obviously the files will still be there in your um, your file folder wherever you've been storing your your FP12 files. So as I say, that the, the compatibility is 100% between 15 and 18. So you should find it very smooth. Okay. Uh, here's a question: Will FileMaker Cloud um, uh, at AWS for version 18 be released at the same time as the other products? The answer here is yes. Um, when we released um, at the end of March, um, the 18 platform, there was a new version of FileMaker Cloud uh, for AWS that was pushed out as well. Um, question here about uh, the Zabbix um, feature, Neil. Does Zabbix run with FileMaker Server 17? Yes, actually, uh, Zabbix will run with 17. Um, at the end of the, the day, um, the way Zabbix works is it's uh, uh, an agent and a server. Uh, the agent itself, um, well, you can check on zabbix.com, um, runs on virtually any server. So it, it's not specific to FileMaker per se. Um, you know, if, if you're running any other kind of server, um, you could run that agent on that server. Um, so, you know, 17 is no different, but, um, you yeah, know, if you check out zabbix.com, you can see the, the system requirements for uh, the agent and also the system requirements for the server you have to set up to collect the data as well. Uh, I'm going to jump in real quick because, Vince, I looked up the question about the save a copy as XML, um, and it is only supported in FileMaker Pro. We have not extended it to FileMaker Server just yet. Um, and you can find more information about what platforms we supported on in the help topic. Okay, we're running out of time, but it'll take a few last questions. Uh, here's one, Neil. Will um, FileMaker Server 18 support FileMaker 16 clients? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so again, uh, this all comes down to the, the file format we're supporting, which FP12 format. So as long as you're running that, um, you can have uh, compatibility actually both ways um, in, in terms of versions. Uh, and uh, for FileMaker Server 18, will it be compatible with Windows Server 2019 on AWS? Yeah, that's a good question. So we, we, um, we have tested 2019, obviously, um, Windows 20, Server 2019 did have a, a kind of a stumbled start, um, but they, they finally released the, the final version. I think it was November in the end. Um, so it has been tested, so uh, there are no issues at all with, with uh, Server 2019. Okay, we are um, a few seconds past the hour, so um, we have to wrap up Q&A. We really do appreciate you taking the time away from your busy day. Uh, to listen to us talk about the FileMaker 18 platform. Uh, so we do appreciate that. And with that, I'd like to say uh, goodbye.